Right, the aftermath. I haven't actually checked to see if this still works. Yeah, good stuff. Um, it really didn't do anything. I think it nicked it a little bit somewhere. There, look. Just there. That's any damage. That's any damage an engine did falling on this. Sorted. Hello and welcome to another budget and legit video. We have the engine that fell on the car, but as you can see, we're actually okay. I mean, so lucky. I'm going to take it as a win. <laughs> the only thing I did do is I did break this here, but that's the only thing that actually broke. That's it. And, you know, I really don't mind that. So what I've got to do today is, this is the plan. I've got to tidy up because I still haven't actually, I've just been ripping tools out here and doing jobs. I haven't tidied up. So I have to tidy up my shed. I have to tidy up my van. And I have to get this engine onto that gearbox and sitting back in the car. That's what I want to get done today. I've only got a few hours. I haven't got the full day, but it shouldn't really take me too long. So all the pipes and stuff that have been cut on this engine, like this one here, and you can see it sticking out there. I'm gonna transfer all the pipes on this. I can't put the throttle body on or the uh, alternator. We have to do that inside the car, but we can stick the gearbox on. And yes, I did do that with the drive shaft. I pulled it out because this is how lazy I was being yesterday, you see. It's my own fault for just being lazy. And I wouldn't mind, look, I have a proper engine support hoist there. Uh, anyway, look, it's my own fault. So, this is the difference, I think, with the uh, automatic gearbox. The alternator, the way um, the alternator or the starter motor and stuff. I'm not, like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but I know there is differences. So, anyway... So we're going to take off the gearbox, the pipes. I'm not going to film all of it. I'll film some of it. Take off the gearbox, take off the pipes, get the engine sitting in. That's the plan for today. Right, we have the engine and box separated. And just got to take the power converter off now. But the, I tell you, it was awkward enough, even on the floor. On the floor it was easy, but I tell you, in the car... That gearbox would be off, would be awkward enough to try and actually take out. So I'm glad I did it this way. For the sake of the few extra bolts that it was going to take me to take it out, it certainly made this job easier. Now, a few downsides is I had to take off the intake manifold because where they've actually cut the pipes, like here, there's a junction box in behind here, which you can't quite see, which I don't think you can get to without, definitely can't get to this one. I'll show you. Here. you will not be able to get to that without taking it off so I'm gonna have to take off that intake manifold which I don't really want to do especially on this engine because this is what can cause your issues you know with things breaking seals breaking and air coming in and all that sort of stuff but there's kind of I've got no choice but to do it unfortunately also at the front of the engine you can see thermostat and stuff I took that off on this engine just so I can get to the top bolt easily enough you don't have to take it off and I don't think I'm going to take it off the new engine because that's the water pump and the thermostat or well, not the, the water pump but the thermostat housing and stuff and that can potentially cause leaks so I think I'll just struggle putting this bolt here back on without taking off that but on the old engine obviously it doesn't make any difference They've also cut this pipe, which again, that's, that's the easy pipe to get to. So I've just taken everything off there. All looks good in there. So now it's a case of pulling this to the side and stripping the new engine, stripping that off the new engine so I can put everything back on and put that back on. Lovely. Right, I've just taken two bolts off the torque converter. I know I said power converter, but hey, look, you know... <laughs> Not used to automatics, okay? Same thing. But listen to the noise of this. <laughs> and that's just turning it by hand. So, yeah, you can just imagine 
It's obviously in with the head. Uh, <laughs> the, the issue is because you can hear that quite, quite badly. So when we do the autopsy of the engine, we're going to see exactly what's gone wrong. Right, before anyone says, I know, I know, you can unbolt this and leave the torque converter in the gearbox. I realise that, but I'm just checking everything anyway. But just so you know, you can see there's two little cutouts here. And there is, I don't know if the camera's going to show, you can just see here, the two little, the two little teeth there. So you can only really put these in one way. You can't really go wrong. And if you do leave it in there, obviously, you know, the system stays sealed and you don't have to change the oil. But I'm changing the oil anyway because I don't know how old this oil is in this gearbox so I, and I just wanted to check everything make sure there was no play in here because the last thing I wanted to do was to put all this back in and you know hear that there's a really graunchy bearing here or there's so much play you know if the gearbox was damaged I could kind of well again not 100% say but I can be pretty confident that this gearbox is okay you know I can't hear any any weird things there's no graunch there's no play in there so that's why I did it the way I did it but you don't have to do it this way it's just I wanted to check everything right I have the gearbox on and it was a nightmare absolute nightmare but what I did do obviously I'd take the intake manifold off because of the pipes I've got to replace and what's really really good to see look how clean they are now you don't want to see any kind of especially wet around them on this particular engine because you know you've got an issue i won't spoil the other engine yet but believe me it's a good sign to see them nice and clean they're not wet they've got no oil or anything like that on them which is a good sign so what i'm going to do now is put the intake back on i've taken off the pipes that they've cut off so just put the intake back on put all the pipes back on and repair the intake because obviously they've cut the pipes off so I can only the, the bracket sits in behind here there's no way of getting it because this is in the way the the actual pipe sits about here and here and as you can see the water pumps here there's just no way you can get in so if this was in the car to repair them pipes is a bit of a nightmare because the intake's gonna have to come off and it's just it's on the other side near the bulkhead and it would just be awkward to do it inside the car. I'm not saying you can't do it, it's just going to be really awkward. So obviously I do it on the floor, which is going to be really easy. Okay, the manifold's on. And this is the, deli the, the, the dilemma you face. This is the new manifold with the new injectors. Do you put the old stuff on because you know it works? Or do you risk the new stuff, which you don't know? Now this engine has done a lot less mileage, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um... The only advantage with the injectors especially is really easy to change even when the car is in so I don't mind about that. But on the back of this where them pipes were, which are now here, this was the one that was on it. Now, it might not have been leaking. I don't know. It doesn't look great in there either. Um, but I changed it because, you know, I know the other one definitely wasn't leaking. There was no water issues with that one. But this one looks like it most probably was or kind of was hard to know but anyway I've left it off so I've used the original one so it just means you know I know so yeah let me know in the in the comments down below what you do do you risk the new parts do you always put the old parts back on you know, let me know I always if, if it's really awkward and you can't be changed or you know you have to take the engine out I'll put the old stuff back on that's just what I do but let me know what you do Sort it. Right, the engine is sitting in. Unfortunately, I couldn't film it because the guy that was helping me didn't want to be on camera. So the fellow I'm renting the shed off. But I used the exactly the same method. Just this time, I put a load of cable ties on it so it couldn't actually fall or it couldn't slip. And I, I put it through this just so it physically couldn't slip. And I tied them both together so both hooks would have to slip off, which is very remote. But anyway, a bit of a hassle getting it in. I had to take... The uh, tensioner off, not a big deal, just 313 mils. And uh, yeah, it is in. It's not bolted down, it's just literally sitting in. That's all I can do for today. And now I've got to clean up and put all the tools in the van for a mobile job I've got to do tomorrow. And I'm not looking forward to it because I've got to do a pump on a digger that someone else has taken off a couple of months ago. So I don't know how they've taken it off and what the story is. But we'll film it. So I'll finish this video off another day few seconds for you don't know how long for me right so what have we done we put all the hoses in we've got all the wiring in. we've got our earth in we've got all the connections in we've got our uh, automatic gearbox uh, lever gear lever on as well uh, we've still got a few connections to do underneath because I can't get to it until I go underneath we've got a throttle body on 
we've got our cover back on. Got to do our expansion bottle. We've got to do our fan belt tensioner. Also then got to do the exhaust. As you can see, there's a couple of studs missing because obviously on this engine, when they was taking it off, the studs came off. And on our engine, all the bolts just come off. So we'll take some studs off there. Our old engine, stick them on there. Not a big deal. And like these are the wires to go underneath. Actually, no, that's for the... I think that one must be for the water um, level. But anyway, look, there's just a few more connections to go underneath and on top. And I'm going to do the start motor bolts next. Again, you can't really see me doing it, so I'm going to do that off camera. But what I have noticed is these HIDs were just sitting here. She did say to me she didn't like them, so she got them changed. They're just ordinary bulbs in there now, which is good because these things are terrible. I never liked them. Um, and the other one's just sitting there, so we're going to rip them out. There's no point in them just flopping around in the breeze. Oh, I don't know if I also mentioned we got the throttle body on. And yeah, we're getting there. Okay, we got the exhaust on, that's all good. I've still got all the wiring to do for the O2 sensors and for the uh, O2 sensors and for the alternator. I've got all these wires in. I've still got to do a couple of clips down there for, I still haven't got the start motor bolt in. But anyway, what I noticed was I was just about to put this on this is the idler, or sorry, this is the tensioner for the fan belt, and it was at the front of the engine. And I'm like, they look really clean, but my setup is completely different. If you look at this engine, the idler is bolted just below the oil filter, where on this, it's bolted at the front of the engine. So what's actually happened is this engine, the car I was taken out had air conditioning because this is where the air conditioning pump is. I'm, I'm only guessing, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a good guess. And this is the idler then. So I'm going to have to take off this idler and put on my tensioner because my engine doesn't have air conditioning or the car doesn't have air conditioning. So that's the difference if you've got air conditioning or not, obviously, because you've got another pulley there. They have to uh, put the uh, fan belt in a different place in the tensioner. Not a big deal, but as long as I know now, rather than sticking all that on and then thinking, well, hold on, my fan belt won't fit because there's a there's a pulley missing. So I'm just going to quickly take off that idler, take off the tensioner and stick that on and I'm going to call it for the day. And then, I don't know, hopefully the next few days, get this lifted up, put everything else on and uh, put the fan belts, uh, sorry, put the drive shafts in, service the engine, we'll put oil in it anyway, and then fire it up and see what it sounds like. We'll see if it drives. But it's always good to check these things. Not a big deal. I would have bolted that on. I would have had it all on. It just wouldn't, the fan belt wouldn't have fitted. It's not the end of the world. But at least I spotted it now. Because it's easier to do it now than it is to do it when everything else is on. Right, as you can see, we have the bottle on. We have the exhaust heat shield on. And all the wires underneath. And all the wires, the knock sensors, and absolutely everything. Theoretically, this can now start. I need to get a service kit for it. And I also need to get an inner CV boot because on the passenger side, sorry, the driver's side inner CV boot is gone. Pa the passenger side one is good. Even though I left it hanging, I just pulled it out so I could leave it hanging to get the engine out without moving because I was just too lazy to get back underneath. But anyway, there's no point me putting that back on until I actually get the inner CV boot. So what we are going to do is once I get the service kit for it, before I put on the drive shafts and stuff, I will start it because essentially if it wasn't for the oil now, and obviously the battery, I could physically start this. So, let me get the other few bits on and we'll see if this baby fires up. Broom, broom, sorted. Right, theoretically, this should be ready to start. Now, I haven't tightened down this properly yet. And the reason why I don't on a new engine is just so if I need to, if there's any issue, I can quickly whip that off. Because you don't really know what's happened or you know what's happened to the wiring loom when you push it in and out. There's just loads of things, so I always like to keep that loose. Now. It can be an issue because it might not start properly, but I do try and push it on as tight as I can, but it's physically loose, so as you can see, I can pull it off. So bear that in mind, but this should now, fingers crossed, start. Uh, I haven't primed or anything, so you're going to see it for the first time, see what the engine sounds like, the air filter and nothing else on. might sound a bit weird because we haven't put the other breather pipes and stuff on, but <laughs> theoretically... Pumps just come on because I've opened the door. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Why press the one? Oh. That's gonna possibility break the wind if I don't. I don't know why they were on. Anyway. Right. Let's try that again. Let them go down. Uh, in park. We'll just prime the system again. Do that a few times. Does it start? Hey, hey, hey! Oh, it sounds nice. It's a little bit tappity. The camera's going to make it sound worse than what it is. This engine might not have been started in a while. Just let the oil go through it. Oh, as well. Boom. Oh, don't so fall. Lovely, just let me bleed the whole system and then I'll get back to you. After you've changed the new engine, don't be worried about You can kind of see smoke coming up. This is because oil on your hands, oil you've dropped from the engine, water from the water pipes and all that sort of stuff. So ignore that. Now, if it's burning smell, obviously that's slightly different, but ignore kind of all this for a while because you will kind of get it. I'm just waiting for this to bleed itself and then we'll actually, I can't put the drive shafts on because I'm waiting on parts, but at least I can check the engine to make sure it's all good. Right, it sounds a million times better. I can't check the level properly because the car is on the angle. So even though it needs a little bit more, I'm gonna have to get the car flat before I check all the fluid levels properly, but it sounds a million times better. We've got heat on the inside of the car now which is obviously good and when it revs up it sounds it sounds lovely now the air filter is off so you're going to get a little bit of a rattle or a rumble when you rev it but it sounds really good it's not overheating it's not doing anything that it's not supposed to do it's awesome right the new cv boot is on so it's got to obviously connect it but it's on, this is the last piece, and we can take it for a drive. Right, it is absolutely perfect. If I give it some beans, changes gear, absolutely lovely. I can put it in small, small, sports mode, Tiptronic or semi, and it's driving at the minute absolutely perfectly. I wasn't sure what the gearbox was like, but the gearbox is good. So that's it. I'm gonna have to do a few little things on it. I'm gonna have to do the front brakes. I'm gonna have to spray the back bumper. Um, I think that's really, I'm gonna give it another check over, but I think that's really it. The front brakes, they're kind of, they will pass, but I, I couldn't sell a car with front brakes like this to anybody. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do front brakes, do a few other little bits, we'll film that, but, yeah, boom, sorted. With all the hassle we had with dropping engines and everything, this is now sorted. So as always, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Okay, don't hands forget, dirty. links up here, links down below. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. Get your hands dirty, sorted. Right, I know what people are gonna say. Well, I bet the bonnet doesn't close now because you destroyed it. Well, let's just have a quick look. Bonnet up with my head because only one hand. Ah, bonnet closes, shut lines are absolutely perfect. Let's just open it back up. I'm going to leave this at the end of the video and at the end of the credits just to see how many people are saying, Well, you didn't show that because it wasn't going to work. And there we go. It's absolutely. Beautiful.